If you're new here, I'm Arwa. And my name is Will. And we live in this old school bus full time. It's a 2001 40 450. It's got the 7.3 liter diesel engine and 380 watts of solar, totally off grid. Come join us to see inside. <laughs> The whole thing took three and a half months to build out, which is kind of insane. We did not think we would be able to get it done that quickly, but we had to move really urgently out of our house, so it kind of just worked out. We divided and conquered all the tasks, so Will was mainly focusing on all our systems like plumbing, propane, and electrical, and I took on the woodworking and building out the interior, so I'm going to be showing that. Right as you enter, we decided to keep the original bus doors. We added in a lock that we now kind of regret. We wish we did a different, more reliable locking system. Right below, we have our staircase with some Spanish tiling, and we did go with vinyl. So far, it's held up well. There is some warping as the weather fluctuates here in California, but it's okay, it's a bus. What can you do? Right as you walk into your left is the back of our dinette seat and right here we have the light switch and it's a dimmer for our puck lights that run all along our bus's ceiling. Our ceilings are cedar planks and they were tongue groove. They've been coated to be mold and water resistant and they've held up really well. We haven't had any issues with them and I really love how they turned out. To your right when you walk in is this little dash storage that was really difficult to make as you can see the cut is very weird we did butcher block all throughout for all our countertops so i decided to throw it up here as well and make this as functional as possible so you could walk through and it's not bulging out this right here is where we store all our shoes and car related things like paperwork and right here for the driver's storage is some cup holders. I made custom cup holders for our hydro flasks because it's such a big pet peeve of mine when they can't fit in regular cars cup holders so they just slide in nicely there and right above it is just driver storage. Speakers, chapstick, things like that. And right above we did install a backup camera and we decided to keep a lot of the driver's area original and not really mess with it. And right above that is the bookshelf that used to be a cabinet for bus related things and safety equipment. So I pulled that out and inserted a bookshelf where that was to kind of make use of that space. Books can't fully fit straight. They kind of have to be angled. Some of my books fit, but I'm so glad I decided to do this because I read a lot, so that comes in handy. Originally, I almost bought one of those bookshelf bars that are hundreds of dollars, so we decided to make one with leftover copper that we had from our propane system, and this was like 20 bucks to make, if that. So that worked nicely. This is also the original bus control panel that we just decided to keep in. Right behind here is just access to the original bus's wires for its lights and whatnot. We decided to keep our accessibility to that and also cut out a little hole. This kind of just shows us if we're signaling and I thought it was charming so we just kept it. Because all storage and space in here is so valuable, there's like a few inches of storage space right behind the driver's seat. So I stuffed in some bags and a yoga mat and took advantage of the extra storage space back there. Next up is the closet and I actually built this barn door just using the scraps from our ceiling cedar panels. I'm really happy with the way it turned out considering it was just all scraps. And once you open it, inside is my closet. Will currently doesn't live in here full time just yet, I do, so once he comes in there's plenty of space for him. But right now I just have toiletries up top, clothes on these center two shelves, and then I keep laundry and coats on the bottom. Originally I wanted to do a really cool layout where I had a clothing rack slide out and all these different kinds of drawers, but we ran out of time since we had a four month limit. So I just went with basic shelves and I use a bunch of organizers and I'm pretty happy with it. 
on the back of the closet door is also a full length mirror so you can back up and see what you're wearing from a different distance rather than it being so up close to you which is great the door also doubles as a block from anyone seeing in from the front windows and I saved a lot of time not having to cut out curtains or shades for the awkwardly sized and shaped front doors and windows so and the door blocking you from seeing the steering wheel or the bus driver seat makes it feel so much more like a house because you kind of forget you're in a bus or a car for this little square we just raise this cushion up and balance it on the back of the dinette so it blocks out this area too this right here is our dinette breakfast nook and this was so essential i'm so glad we built this i know a lot of people do the dinette to bed transition and we almost did that i would have totally regretted that because i would have been too lazy to make the bed every single day so this is amazing it's great to be on your laptop here i eat here and i have that distance between this is the kitchen and this is where i eat and that's the bedroom so i'm super glad we went with this it's completely made of plywood besides the table this is the butcher block that we went with all throughout the bus each seat took nine hours to make it took a very long time i could not find any tutorials on how to make these so i kind of just built a box and then worked around that within that box is where we have a bunch of storage right in here i store a lot of medical equipment and tools the cushions are three inches i did not have enough time to learn how to sew throughout this whole process but these are just made out of fabric from our local fabric store and i just used fabric tape and folded it all in and they've held up for six months now so that was an affordable and quick way to do that and in this seat is where i store a bunch of my camera equipment hiking backpacks and art supplies just fun stuff this table is actually a boat table i just screwed it right into the subfloor and it's held up it's fine it does wobble a little bit but it doesn't bother me the table's adjustable so you can raise and lower and i added in these little stilts on the front of each dinette seat so the table can drop down into a couch that is a van build classic and if you're under five seven you could probably sleep here so i guess it doubles as a guest bed i think we rarely use the couch mode but it's there and it's nice to have that option the curtains are blackout so they give a little bit of insulation obviously the windows most of which we kept almost all of them so the temperature flux sometimes is an issue but it's completely worth it i love having the visibility and having the sun come in we installed the curtains using a button screw. I'm not really sure what the name of it was called. We just rolled them up with this leather strap during the daytime and they were great. Talk to me and tell me all that you've seen, all the colors. We did decide to go with a full shower in here. That was one of my non-negotiables because we've done a bunch of trips in our cars before and not having a shower really sucks. So it's great to have that option in here when there's not a gym nearby. We do have a water heater, which Will will talk about in a second, but this faucet originally used to be a rainfall shower head and this was just the attachment but Will found a way to maneuver it and kind of hack it into this being the sole shower head and I'm so happy we did that because it takes up way less space and you can take an outdoor shower by bringing the faucet out. The shower actually was built three days before we ended up moving. I had to learn how to tile on the spot. I literally had mortar on my hands holding up tiles and then was checking online to see if I was doing it right. So. That was intense. And you can definitely see that it was a rush job by my edges and some of the cuts. It's my first shower, hopefully my last, and I'm pretty proud of it considering I had no experience. We also store our nature's head toilet in the shower and there's a little boat hatch to the right of it for the ventilation hose and it's completely waterproof, so that's there. And I also keep the trash can in here. I love this toilet. I know it's a bit pricey, but it's 
extremely worth it, especially as a girl. When there's no opportunity to go in nature, you at least have the option to go inside here. The shower drain is directly hooked up to our gray water tank right below it. And right next to the shower is this little section of wall, which I had to take advantage of for more storage. So there's just hooks that have my keys and purse. And just a foot away from the bathroom is the kitchen, my favorite part. This was structurally the toughest for me to build because obviously I've never built a kitchen before and we made everything completely out of scratch. Everything is made out of some type of plywood or butcher block. I had to learn how to make them on the spot as well so you can kind of see all the drawers and cabinets are a little wonky but that's what makes it special I guess. So up top we have some overhead storage which is essentially our pantry and these just open up we have some bins in there holding all our dry food right here is our sink of course we had to pull another classic and have the pull out cutting board that's also counter space it just pulls up and we have our sink and it is a pretty deep sink i've never had an issue with it being too small so that works great for us and right next to that is our oven this is from Rec Pro and it runs completely on propane. It folds up and it's just a three burner stove. We've also had no issues with it. I'm so happy we went with an oven. We almost just went simple and had a camp stove or do some kind of induction cooktop. But I love this because I do a lot of baking. So the oven portion I think I use almost daily. And it's also great to reheat things since we don't have a microwave. This may be expensive and little tricky working with propane but this is definitely a decision I'm so glad we made and I would make it a hundred times over again. Right next to the sink is our water station is what we call it. Right here we have our water tank reader and right now we are at half a tank. In the center we have our water heater remote and these three switches are also water related so this one works the shower light. The center turns on and off the water gauge reader and this turns on and off our water pump. To the far left here is the diesel heater control. The diesel heater is located underneath the sink. It taps directly into our diesel fuel line and well, we'll talk a little bit about that. And right above me is our roof fan. This is great for ventilation while we're cooking or we have the propane on. It inverts both ways so it can ventilate or it can cool. And we love this fan. Sometimes I just pop it open just to get a good breeze in. Underneath here is where we keep a bunch of cleaning supplies and kitchen towels and rags. And right below is our diesel heater vent and it's just located right inside here as well. It doesn't take up that much room at all. And that's been great for the chilly nights that we've had in the mountains. And underneath the oven is just where I store some pans and baking supplies. And this is bungee corded in. All of our drawers right here around me get bungee corded when we're about to drive because I didn't want to use drawer locks. Well, actually that's a lie, I just never installed them. <laughs> I've just been using bungee cords and they work fine. And on the other side is a continuation of the kitchen. So this is just island space. And we went with a front facing fridge and it does have a freezer and there's a bunch of space so this works great. To the left of it is just a bunch of storage drawers. Drawers were really hard to install. I don't think I can ever do it again. They hold just a bunch of utensils and random kitchen items. To the right here was a last minute decision to put in a custom spice rack slash pantry. So all our spices are up top. And then we have some pantry items on the bottom. Right above that is our electrical station and there's a battery monitor, our inverter switch, and some USB and USB-C plugs, as well as a light switch for the bedroom. And the last of the kitchen is this giant drawer right underneath our bed, and this is what stores all of our kitchen items, pots, pans, dishware, and I don't know what we would do without this one because there would not be enough space for all that we have. I did not have to downsize on anything clothes or kitchen wise to move into this bus. So that's saying a lot about how much storage we actually do have in here.
keep you by my side Just tell me this before I go Say to me of course Tell me that when I go I'll be the ghost of yours And just a step away from our kitchen is our bedroom underneath the bed it can actually lever up and there's additional storage that we've never even used under there at the foot of the bed underneath is where we house our 30 gallon water tank as well as our water heater on the other side right underneath the head of our bed is where we keep our electrical system which we'll show you out back right behind our pillows here is what we like to call our nightstands we each have one and it kind of acts as our nightstand or our own personal storage in here. So that's nice to have to grab your Kindle or a book at night and it's just right there. Our mattress is in between a full and a queen so it's a really good size. I have no complaints. I sleep like a baby at night. We have two bedroom fans which are great because we are cold sleepers for sure. And we also have these two bedroom lights that make it so warm and cozy in here at night. We do have curtains for these back windows, but sometimes we like to take them off. And now let's head outside where Will's gonna talk about some of our systems and show you the outside of our bus. side of the bus we got the water heater it just opens up you can turn it off and on and it heats the water in our bus it runs on propane so right here is our exhaust for the diesel heater just shoots out away from the bus so you don't breathe any of that in the diesel heater just taps right into our fuel tank for the bus which is pretty sick so yeah that's super nice and just unlimited heat for the bus and then right in front of the exhaust for the diesel heater right here we got the gray water tank. It's mounted to the beams that run under the bus, just bolted down and it's held great. And right on the back here we got two 20 pound propane tanks and just open this up, turn them off and on whenever we're cooking. You can do it also from inside the bed so like you don't gotta come out here in the cold or something. So yeah, that's nice. I built a little shelf for them and it's just bolted to a frame on the inside of the bus. So it's pretty sturdy. These are heavy duty shelving brackets so it holds great. This tube right here is our propane line. It just runs inside the bus and then attaches some copper tubing and that connects up to our oven and the water heater. Right above me is our backup camera. Installed it on the back, again, bolted it to the bus, and there's just a long wire that runs to the front that shows that screen where we can just see what's behind us. Right here is just your traditional uh, RV ladder. Just put it on the back, makes getting to the roof super easy. And to our deck and our solar panels. Washed in every shade of green and all the colors. Summer so this is our roof deck. It's just uh, pressure treated wood, some two by fours that we secured to the body of the bus. Right here we got two 180 watt solar panels that keep us off grid and power everything in the bus. This is really messy right now. This is our garage space slash plumbing space slash electrical space. <laughs> so it's a lot of things. This is where we store a bunch of stuff. As you can see, like we got Christmas decorations in here, guitars, and then to the left in here, we actually have our whole plumbing system. And then over to the right, we have our whole electrical system. Okay, so for our electrical system, we have two 100 amp hour batteries. Uh, they're both lithium. And we also have an 1000 watt inverter that is able to power anything that would run in your standard house outlet. The switch is just inside and the outlet is on the outside of the dinette. The whole electrical system is 12 volt. And then for our plumbing, we got a 30 gallon water tank 
Water's all triple filtered. We got the water pump back here, the accumulator, and then that runs into the water heater and then to the whole system. So that's just a quick overview of our systems. It all seems pretty complicated, but trust me, if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. We had zero experience going into this, so it was definitely a journey to get to this point. I know it can seem super intimidating watching a tour like this with all the systems and how it's built and how it looks at the end, but this is just a romanticized version. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into this, and like Will said, if we can do it, you can definitely For do sure. it. We went into this with literally zero knowledge on any of it. We just watched a million YouTube videos. We didn't even know how to use a drill. It's possible. <laughs> My advice to anyone who wants to take a project on like this and potentially live on the road is definitely do your research, pick a reliable vehicle. This is probably not the most reliable, a school bus, but we love it. And as cheesy as it sounds, don't give up. It is stressful, it's not gonna it's be gonna easy, <laughs> but it's definitely worth it. My advice would be you don't need all the money or the experience, just start somewhere. We're not For super sure. rich or nothing, we're just two kids. <laughs> Had a dream. <laughs> oh, yeah.